it all comes down to whether you're willing to do the work to get yourself in the state of crystallizing that energy, let's just say, that you're talking about uh, to, to make these things happen. I think the practice of disciplines is just getting, you're actually just training all of those variables over and over and over until you create a system where you are more likely to get sort of psychic hits or visions or impressions. You are reawakening that part of you. You're starting to train the brain together, you know, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, the two hemispheres to work together towards this purpose. Um, it's the whole thing is just absolutely fascinating. And I, I um, just, yeah, I'm sorry. Go on. <clears throat> no, uh, just that. And it's interesting with what you were saying before. <clears throat> we have to work so hard to reproduce it at this point. Like all these things I'm talking about, it is work to try to get it to happen more regularly as opposed to spontaneously. Um, right. So I, I suspect that, uh, A, any number of non-human, let's say, alien groups that are here have this ability oh, to yeah. a, a level greater than what we have, it seems. Right. Um, at least it seems to be the case. Um, and that I'm going to go further and let's just assume that there's a clandestine infrastructure that is well aware of this, of course, um, that has been aware of this for generations and has secretly been trying to cultivate uh, psychic abilities, let's say, with people. And furthermore, I'm going to guess that in the next generation or so, we're going to see, with the help of artificial intelligence, they're going to identify genes, genetics in us that that uh, enhance these psychic capabilities. I'm just going to take a guess. And furthermore, that they're going to use very, very strong AI programming to know exactly how to how to switch up our genetics a little bit to enhance those psychic abilities. So I think wouldn't shock me in the next 20, 30, 40 years, we see new generations of people with these very enhanced psychic skills i mean it sounds like right out of one of the science fiction movies that that you love to talk about but i think that that's <laughs> i think that's likely to happen um, i i uh, don't think it's that far away and yeah all. i mean i th not at all there are places I, I in the world feeling. i'm sure where they're they're exper yeah. experimenting readily with crispr uh, genetic manipulation and you and I were watching that documentary where people are self augmenting because there's nothing really to stop them so I don't no, think it's going to take 40 years when it's already well, when I say 40 years I mean like for the new generations to mature to you know I what I mean like to have, sure. have babies born in the next decade or two so by the time that they reach maturity I guess is what I mean but yeah they'll be working on these technologies. I think they're going to figure a lot of things out in the next generation. This is one reason I, I think the study of UFOs almost any longer, I, I, I can't even extricate it from transhumanism. Actually, I think that they're mm, very right. closely intertwined. Someone right. was writing to me at one point and said, well, as, as if they didn't really want me to talk about transhumanism, they wanted me to stick to UFOs. And I think, well, okay, but really, when you're thinking about the presence of non-human intelligences that are here acting on this world, acting on human beings, uh, you know, you're going to inevitably talk about transhumanism because it seems to me that there is got there's got to be a covert program to develop human beings to deal with this psychic mastery that if they've got because they're at a level where they not only can get into our heads i think mm -hmm. but they they figured out ways implicitly to understand space and time and i and i have a, a feeling that's just do has to do with their brain organization they're they've just passed a cusp that allows them to do it and i th i think we're close to it we can use machines technology to do it, but we're not doing it in our brains. And I think 
they can do it in our brains and that's probably an advantage. So oh, yeah, the, the, yeah. Um, the cognitive manipulation that we always talk about. Mm -hmm. um, For starters, and then just, it certainly helps to manipulate space and time if you yourself have a, a cognitive understanding of how to manipulate space and time. Like we don't really have that in our waking consciousness because we're not smart enough. We don't, our brains aren't really set up like that. But if our brains were set up like that, we could then use technology to enhance it even further. So I think that's what you've got probably a black budget world working on. Oh, and that's transhumanism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's transhumanism. I think they're, they're looking to do it. And I was just going to say, I have strong mixed feelings about transhumanism. On the one hand, uh, I've, as you know, probably most listeners by now know because I talk about it a lot. I've been really interested in human prehistory and human evolution uh, over the last couple of years. I've really gone into it. I've read many books on this. You and, have. <laughs> and I am well aware of the transformation of of uh, hominins, as we're called, you know, basically standing up upright apes that lost their hair and got big brains and flattened out our faces and and all of that like that's a transformation and it's fascinating and that includes at some point maybe 50 55,000 years ago the development of language and consciousness all of that's not that long ago so to me I'm just fascinated by this story and and it hammers home the idea that we've always been in a transformation where we're not the same that we were 100,000 years ago or 50,000 or 10,000 years ago, like we are changing. So on that basis, I should say, well, why why should I be opposed to an ongoing transformation of the human species? And in a sense, I'm not opposed to it, but I, I guess I would much prefer to see it happen a little more slowly, a little more naturally, rather than what we're seeing now is a completely artificially directed rapid evolution that's being done with you know human technology and we're we're directing it ourselves or you can say the aliens are directing it but we're but it's a high level of it's an intelligence that is changing our species so rapidly like there's no there's no ev evolution in the past that worked that worked as fast as what's happening to us now and that's what really uh, I find disturbing mm -hmm. that it's happening this quickly. But uh, I mean, the, the principle of, of change, the principle of what we call transhumanism, you know, I mean, look, moder we are transhumanists compared to Neanderthals. We're not right. the same as them. We're transhuman right. compared with the, the earlier versions of hominin that preceded us. If a homo erectus were to look at us, they'd be like, wow. Transhuman, <laughs> trans erectus, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, so, you know, you could look at it that way, but I just think to me, it's the speed that's of the magnitude that's um, frightening me. But the fact is, it's obviously happening. And I do think members of our species, if not all of us, are going to be past that psychic threshold. More and more of us will be past that psychic threshold in the near future. That's what I suspect. Yeah, it makes me wonder if part of the infiltration might be to sabotage our abilities, like to sabotage us uh, crossing that threshold. I don't think anyone, I think there's there's too uh, much. Okay, this is interesting. You like this? <clears throat> yeah, I just yeah. thought about that. So alien um, infiltration, let's just go mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. Um Fifth column, human looking hybrids, all of mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. Seeking to crush higher human consciousness. Is that what you're right? Wondering? Because yeah. essentially you could think that that would be the stage where we become a threat to them. Typically, we think of it in physical terms when we are able to go and visit them, you know, and and, you know, them were a problem for them. But what if it's more about our minds? What if it's all about our minds? Well, look, and, let's look at the world that is developing all around us. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the, the global revolution that I just can't, I talk until I'm blue in the face. Destroying about. ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, plug into the metaverse. This is not a, this is not a creation of higher consciousness at all. Not in my opinion. I think it's a creation of a lower consciousness. So right. in that sense, I would, I think I would agree with you. Right. GPS is technology. Yeah. It all makes our brains so much lazier and we don't need to use any psychic for anything. I mean, we don't right now. We don't need to use no. these. That's why I believe they're dormant. That's why you believe they're dormant or they're mm -hmm. going dormant <clears throat> because there is absolutely no need for them. And it's just a few crazy people like not a few. There's a lot of us who are in pursuit of this because we've had a taste of it. Uh, that we're trying to develop, develop, develop. And then you have people like Ingo Swan saying they seem to be interested in people who are developing these abilities. And you talk to the school of remote viewers. I'm not, I don't mean school, I mean group of remote viewers. And there's this quiet belief that we're getting someone's attention. A lot of people who did remote viewing very seriously are concerned quietly. Sometimes they talk about it, sometimes they don't. But uh, that, you know, when they started remote viewing is when they started having experiences. There's someone on the site and I, we talk about this a lot mm -hmm. um, because you know what? It's as much as I want to say no, that's when my weird experiences started happening. I mean, I had other things happening before mm -hmm. that, which is what led me to it in the first place, trying to sort out what the heck was going on with my own brain. But um, but I am running into more and more people who are remote viewers or who did it seriously. I'll just speak for those people. Yeah. And they feel like, they have attracted in something that it's not really doing anything bad to them that they know of, but it seems to have attracted something in. Yeah, some version of the hitchhiker effect. Yeah, and it's Maybe, and they're yeah. not they're not sure that it's just a one time thing. You know, it's almost yeah. like, you know, when we get talking about it, we question whether we're under some sort of surveillance and people think oh it's other remote viewers surveilling each other no no i i personally don't so you're believe saying these that. remote these remote viewers believe that there is a non-human intelligence that that notices them once they yeah. start doing that is I that mean, what you're suggesting yeah and you know what mm -hmm. we're kind of trained in that discipline to not talk like that you know so um we it's more between people that these kind of discussions come out. That's it's never really, at least I haven't heard it in a group forum or anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, cause you're very hesitant to draw conclusions like, okay, there's non-human beings and they seem to have some sort of interest in me. I mean, you, people just don't really publicly make those claims, but I'm just sort of letting people know that behind the scenes, there is some discussion going on like this of, People either started having really unusual, like a next level of unusual stuff happening in their life after they became serious remote viewers, like doing it very, very seriously. Um, or, um, you know, they don't know who it is. They just have a sense, a feeling of who it is. And they just record for themselves the exact circumstances of how it happened. But you know what, we may never be able to figure it out because of exactly what we said before. Uh, we are at a disadvantage The the cognitive manipulation that could be happening with us is we I think we can't even imagine it, you know. Yeah. But um, I think there's something there's something there, you know. Yeah. That's interesting. Why did the this original idea you floated? Are we being uh, manipulated as a way to repress our consciousness mm, mm. and to prevent these abilities from manifesting these and all other kinds of freedom? Uh, I I definitely agree with that. There's no question. I think uh, we're we're in a global revolution that is. Um, you know, just like as Orwell said, imagine uh, the, the, a future in which a boot squashing down on on the human face forever, and I th I think that's the nature of this revolution. It, it's being portrayed as a, a way to make everyone safe, a way to organize society, uh, but there's just no wiggle room for freedom anymore. So, uh, and also one in which uh, propaganda 
and mind control are it's so obvious now that it is just spreading all around. So, yeah, it makes sense that there's going to be a much lower level of consciousness and awareness and uh, people just plugging into virtual reality, uh, virtual reality fun houses, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, but where there will be, I think there will be a cadre of people who will be genetically enhanced. I, I, I suspect that for at least a few generations, and maybe for a long time, I don't know how this will work out, there will be controlled genetic enhancements in which like the higher intelligence, higher psychic abilities, super superhuman capabilities mm-hmm. will be doled out in a limited fashion mm. to a few people. Basically, if you've yeah. got enough billions of dollars to afford it or if you're in the right. right group, you're in the right intelligence agency, whatever. Like there will be it That's will be point. portioned out on a limited basis right. to people who can be trusted. Right. Super abilities. Of course, they're but, never going to let everybody have that. I, I didn't well, really think about that. Yeah. Well, what I what I wonder in uh, the more distant future, though, is that just like with ha- any kind of hacking, will ordinary people learn the codes, the genetic codes to be able to do this and just do their own do-it-yourself genetic enhancements? Um, You're wondering if they will let people do that? Well, they won't. No one's going to let people do that. But will people be able to do it anyway? Will they find a way to illegally mm. hack their own genes? Like I think that's mm. an actually an interesting possibility. Well, and they're they're the case, hacking they're, their own genes right now. Yes, exactly. And there's always there's for years there's already been uh, media, big media, scare stories about uh, do-it-yourself hack gene therapy. Bad idea. Don't do it. Oh my uh, God. I, there's a lot of that that's been out for years. So mm. I think that will continue. And we're going to see a a really interesting power struggle over genetic enhancements. This is a really a weird thing. Like whether <laughs> it's like do it yourself gene therapies that will be the side of freedom and the people. And it, to me, it's just so crazy because none of it seems positive to me. None of it. But I think that's what's going to happen. Like the, you're going to see. A small elite that's going to want to hold on to the secrets of genetic mastery. And they're going to be trying to hold off the flood of ordinary people who are just going to do this themselves. So the question is, will they will will ordinary people have the capability of doing right. it themselves? I think there are people who do gene therapy on themselves now. Yeah, there are. So yeah. we saw that in the documentary. So that's what right. if what if the elites Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll call it that 8,000, you know, that the yeah. Dutch banker talked mm-hmm. about. What if the elites already have this? 